I'm a professor at the University of California at Berkeley and have been since 1980. I got my PhD at New York University in biological anthropology, also called physical anthropology, and I did my dissertation work on the diet of wild howler monkeys. And that's what got me interested in diet and digestive physiology and information about the nutritional content of wild plant foods and how these things could be used to better understand modern human biology. Well, an anthropoid primate takes more than 65% of the daily diet, on, as a general rule, from plant foods. And um, if you're a smaller primate, you probably get your protein from animal source foods. You probably get them from insects or something like that. But if you are a larger bodied primate, you have the energetic flexibility to be able to eat foods that are more slowly digesting. And so very often larger monkeys and apes get their protein from leafy matter, leaves, which have very high quality protein, young leaves. We have exactly the same nutritional requirements as far as I can tell. All animals have the same nutritional requirements. All animals are. Someone said this, it was not me. Whoever it is, I'd like to give them the Nobel Prize. They said all animal species are, are different experiments, natural experiments, aimed at securing some percentage of the always finite materials the organic materials that can serve as food that are on the planet at any given time. So every single thing, from a frog to a lion to a, a gerbil to whatever, these are all just natural designs to secure some type of that pie of edibility. Everything needs proteins, fats, carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals. There's some differences, like cats, for example, have somewhat different amino acid requirements and so on. But basically, they're, they're just, my students often seem to think that there's a bunch of nutrients out there that other things eat, <laughs> and then there are just these proteins and so on. Those are very important to people. They don't seem to realize that that's all there is, kids. It's, that's the whole world, and everybody wants a piece of the pie. And how you get the pie just depends on whether you're a lion or a human or a mouse or a fish. Well, how would we have known about our similarities and differences between ourselves and the common chimpanzee if uh, Tag Dimmitt from Davis and I hadn't done those feeding trials on chimpanzees to find out how quickly their foods passed and whether they were able to digest dietary fiber and compare that with the human data from Cornell? We wouldn't have known. If you don't understand how things are similar and different, you really can't ask very interesting questions. The foods of higher primates, that is all of the anthropoids or the haplorines, that is all of the monkeys, the apes, and the apes, all the non-human primates. The prosimians, the prosimians probably some of them would like to eat more animal source foods than they can get, but most of them too have to fill up primarily on plant foods or on very noxious, horrible insects that nothing else wants to eat. The, the idea that human beings should eat a lot of meat, to me, is, is a ludicrous statement. And I don't see how any scientist who was familiar with primate diets, primate physiology, and human diets, and the actual composition of protein, fats, and carbohydrates, and how they're metabolized in the body and so on, I do not say, see how they could make such a ridiculous statement. It is absolutely ridiculous. The brain does not run on protein. The body does not want to break down protein to get those glucose, you know, glucose containing amino acids. It doesn't want to do it. Don't make me do it. Please don't make me do it. Fill me up with sugars and starches for, for your energy and then protein can go to satisfy your requirements for nitrogen and amino acids and so on and can take care of all of the body functions because of course protein you cannot store it. You have to eat it in your diet every single day. And then and fat has its certain functions in the body as well. And let each of those three macronutrients do what they're supposed to do and quit trying to force humans to eat one or the other and use them in a way that I believe is not compatible with human biology. I get very excited about this because I think it's so silly it's, it, and dangerous. I am not familiar with the latest modifications of the paleo diet. But if the paleo diets being advocated at present are stating that human beings should take most of their daily caloric substrate from meat, 
foods, I would just say this it, it is a ridiculous and ludicrous idea and statement. I just think that in a way it's a shame that the media jumps on each idea that comes down the turnpike with the zeal that it does such that the American public is so confused about what they should eat and shouldn't eat and what is good for them and what isn't good for them. I feel that there should be uh, careful, you know, more careful research, more replication of research, and more prudence in making statements. And usually these are very single, uh, single source sorts of statements, such as, you know, X is bad for you, or Y is good for you, or you'll live longer if you eat ABC, or something like that. I think that um, the media should back off a little bit from taking these news flashes and distributing them with such enthusiasm because humans are so concerned about their diet and humans displace a lot of their anxieties and their cares and so on onto their foods. Foods are a natural medium for this. What do students often complain about in college? Gee, the food's terrible. Well, the food's probably <laughs> wonderful. It's just that food's a natural medium to displace on. And so I think it's really rather cruel to continuously put forth these ideas that often on second examination don't hold up at all and often are extremely economically uh, harmful for people on the other side of the world that may exist to harvest coconuts or may exist to harvest um, you know some type of palm oils or something like that and you get this statement oh that kind of palm oil causes X problem or oh, oh watch out for coconuts they might have Y in them and then no one wants to buy them for five or six years and what happens to all of the people on the other side of the world whose livelihood depends on those things now if they really are bad for us, okay, maybe you have something you know to worry about and something you don't want to buy anymore. But most of the time, these claims prove to be ridiculous and they're forgotten and gradually, the, look at coconuts right now. I mean, coconut milk, coconut water. I mean, you can't take a step down the street without tripping over a coconut. And I remember about 15 years or so ago, whoa, coconut, there's coconut oil in cookies. Ooh, don't buy any cookies. It's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I just think the media is just, has so much control over our lives in every way, and I just wish it would back off.